Yes, sir. Phenomenal, phenomenal evening. How's everybody feeling? We are back with another Re Remember Repeat interview. And and I say we are back officially because it's been a minute since we did one. We just finished the book, The Power of Awareness. Want everybody to tap in. Cause without awareness, it's 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 nothing, right? You can you can be aware of how you well, you can be feeling a certain way, but not aware of how to change it, you know what I mean? And things of that nature. So I need y'all to tap in. I need y'all to really tap into what we doing here, education over bullshit. Right? I'ma just say it. education over bullshit. It's fly trying to get in here and make it fly, man. All right, um, let's go, Max, what it do, family? Let's see what we doing here. Gotta add the family in. In fact, let me add a few people in before I do that. How's everybody feeling today? I hope everybody's having a productive day, getting things done that you wanna get done, things that you need to get done. Um, that's every single day. We can't just, um. We can relax, but you know, I'd rather, I'd rather get things done to reach my goals and then relax. You know what I mean? But relaxation is good too. Don't, don't, don't let me, uh, have you out here like a machine guys. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, man, everything is swell. The book signing went well. We had some good people come out. We had some people sip some wine, eat some good food. So, um, tap in, man. Just tap in. Re-remember, repeat as a family. It's, it's, it's not just a, a show, you know what I mean? Everybody that come on here, I will be inviting them back because we had some amazing guests. And um, yeah, family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That fly want to get educated too. He trying to get in. I'm about to add you in a few seconds, Trinity. Two seconds. Yes, we have a female tyrant coming on this show. She she knocking shit down. She blazing trails, you know what I mean? And um she's doing it at, at at her pace, you know what I mean? And um she's killing shit over where over over in the entrepreneurship scene. So let's get some more people in here. And then I will introduce you guys to our special guest. All right. Yeah, man, I see, I see, read, remember, repeat going on like revolt, man. Tag revolt in this, man. Let me know if y'all see the same thing, man. I see, read, remember, repeat going on revolt. Yo, yo, what's good, big bro? How you feeling, man? Request to join. All right, we adding you right now, Trini. Trinity. Yes, yes. Just added you. Let's see what's going on here. Hopefully Instagram don't try to stop our greatness. Oh, man, that's good, man. Definitely hear all as well. Glad to see that you was out there, bro. You know what I mean? Doing your thing. We need your interview too, man, because you are author, but hey. What's good? How's it going? How's it going, Trinity? I'm doing amazing, honestly. Just at the gym, so endorphins are super high. I'm in a uh -huh. great mood. And I love uh, money, honestly. Yes, yes, yes. I just left the gym also, so I'm feeling the same way you feeling. Um okay. what'd you get today? Oh no, I did I ain't gonna lie, I did arms because I couldn't do too much legs. I would have been um that would have been way too crazy for me. I'd have been taking my time coming home, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, yeah, we definitely did some arms today. Um, how, how, how was it for you? Solid, beautiful. I, I've been working on deadlifting, so I was deadlifting today, and I, I every week I'm lifting more. So I think I went up to fifty five today, fifty five on each side. Mm. That, that's right now my PR. That's like my PR right now. Let's go. Not only do Trinity has a regular page, she also has a fitness page. So please do follow, you know what I mean? Follow along, see what's going on. Uh, 
I want to I want to give you a proper introduction, right? Happy Memorial Day. Um, yeah. it's definitely she. This is a female soldier. You know what I mean? She's not 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 literally a, a a veteran, but I'm talking about just knocking shit down. Like I see her putting out her videos, putting out her Instagram videos. She she's teaching people about entrepreneurship and 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 a great student at that because I watched her growth. So. I'm I'm amazed, period. You know what I mean? With just being in the presence right now. And um Trini, uh let them know, let them know about yourself. Um, well, hello everyone. My name is Trini Jackson. I'm 21 years old, turning 22 this year. Um I got out of college when I was 18, and other ever since then I've just been finding different ways to make money and do what I want to do. And when I want to do it, I know that. I feel like having a, nothing, nothing wrong with having a job. I think a job is a short-term solution to a long-term problem. So I'm always looking to find different ways to make money. And I'm a parent. I have a dog. His name is Coda. He's three, and that's my baby boy. And other than that, um, that's really pretty much it. I'm just focusing every day on just growing myself in different ways and just yes. pursuing the best version of me. Oh, man, that's dope, man, because it ain't no competition. It's always a, it's always a us thing, right? It's like... You just got to be the best version of yourself. You know what I mean? Um, the, the fact that you're 21, it really, like, I didn't even know you were that young. So the stuff that you're doing is, like, I seen an interview. You was like, I'm going to be successful. Like, like, there's no other way around that. It's like you had that whole, like, you know what I mean, boldness to you. And and, and I, I I respect that. Fully. Yeah. I just want to let you know I sincerely respect that. Thank you. It's great. I don't be feel. I don't feel young. I don't know. Twenty one doesn't feel young to me right now. As I get older, it probably will. But right now, it just doesn't. I don't know. People say that. I feel like if I'm not a teen, I don't know. I feel. I don't. They said twenty to new thirty now. That's what <laughs> I'm said, thinking. Nah, I'm that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy though. Shit, I'm thirty actually. Um, and you know, I the the whole entrepreneurship. Things like that. It wasn't new to me because you know, I'm not gonna lie, I sold drugs before. But at the same time, it's like OG entrepreneur. <laughs> legit, yeah, you know what I mean? Legit entrepreneurship is like it's it was new to me. And it was like, you know, I I was feeling that whole thing with a job and things like that. So it was like, you know, my time was everything. You feel yeah. me? Um let us know a little bit about, you know, your background, where you came up, and um before you do that, what does what does your name mean to you, Trinity? So, okay, well, technically, so Trinity is the character from The Matrix. So that's where my parents, that's where, it's not like the Holy Trinity or anything. A lot of people assume that that's not what it is. My parents love The Matrix, so it's from The Matrix. Um, I mean, my favorite number is three. It's, like, powerful to me. Of course, since I'm Trinity Jackson, not just Trinity, I always, I always introduce, introduce myself as Trinity Jackson. So I feel like my first name is Lit, but I feel like I, my last name means more to me just because that's just connected to my family, connected to my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister. And when I tell people who I am, that I say Trinity Jackson because I feel like being a Jackson is, like, just naturally powerful to me. Like, you know, not even comparing it to other people who are Jacksons, just, like, I'm a Jackson. So, of course, I feel like I should be able to move differently. Not just because, I don't know, everybody should feel that same way about their own last name. So my last name means more to me than my first name, um, just because of the fact that it connects with my whole family. My grandpa, Clarence Jackson, he's an amazing entrepreneur. So me being a Jackson, I'm like, I'm just like my grandpa because you feel me, I'm just like my dad, I'm just like my grandpa. I'm just like, you know. So Jackson means more to me than Trinity does. Uh, I like being a Jackson. I love, you know, where my, I don't want to get married and change my name. Like, I don't want to ever change it. I want to be Trinity Jackson for the rest of my life. So oh, that's, that's dope. Is how I feel about my name in general. And, um, and I learned that in a book. My mom, she just got on. My mom is literally on here right now. But she had me listen to a book um, called Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office. Yes. Hey, mom. Mm, I love you. Going, mom? It's called Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office. It talks about how you should have a firm handshake. Always introduce yourself as your first name, last name. So when people meet me, they never expect it. They're like, oh, I'm Jake. I'm Ohio. My name is Trini Jackson. So anyways, that's besides the point. 
my, I'm I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but um, I was raised in Houston, Texas. I we went back and forth to Baton Rouge a lot though growing up. Um, and then as I grew up, I always played sports. Sports was a really big part of like what I did. I got injured when I was 14 years old. So I thought my world was over. I thought my life had just collapsed before me and that nothing else was really going to ever work for me. I was literally 14 years old. No one could tell me that my life wasn't over. I couldn't play softball, basketball, couldn't run track. And that was really my holy grail to figure out how to get to college. Um, but it ended up being so perfect because I focused more on my academics and through focusing on my academics and being so in depth with school, I got amazing grades. I graduated with a 4.3 GPA, top 10% of my school, but that didn't really matter. Being that involved in school made me realize that I don't like school and I don't feel like the school is worth it. I, I, it made me realize it wasn't worth the time investment. I feel like I wasn't, when I was really going to school, not to play sports, there are a lot of athletes that go to school just so they could play the sport they want to. Yeah. When I, sports out of the equation I realized that this didn't really mean as much as I thought it did I would rather just do what I want to do so it actually ended up working out for the best because I don't know what I would do I don't know where I would be if I was just like a regular college student right now honestly right yeah it's like uh it's a difference from being like awoken to something that got you like you know what I mean like 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 your mind is moving like that's what entrepreneurship does for me like I feel like if it was anything else, I would still be sleep to a lot of things. You know what I mean? I'll come home, watch a movie. You know what I mean? Like regular things. But it's like now it's like you got that energy to just stay active, stay woke, stay journaling, stay. Um, like you're going to move it intentionally. Yeah, I think it's more intentionally. You know what I mean? That's the perfect word right there as, a, as, as opposed to not, you know, um, you know, moving with intent. And um, yeah, man, that's dope. That's dope. You know what I mean? Um, what is your earliest memory? My earliest memory? Mm, what is my earliest memory? I, I don't know. I don't know, if my, I don't know if it's my earliest. I do remember, I mean, I had a grandmother who, I had my dad, I met my dad's mom when I was like four years old and she had passed when I was younger. So I only met her one time. But I remember walking up to her bedside and talking to her before. Um, I don't, that's the only memory I have of her. And I feel like that's like the a big core memory I have. So that I remember. And then, because I love my dad. my wife, I didn't know her well, but I've heard so much about my dad's mom and how um, kind-hearted she was. And she, would, she made us dresses. So she, I grew up in the dresses and everything like that. So, but I never really, I only met her one time that I remember. So that, I think that's a core memory in terms of, I remember it very vividly. Um, yeah, I would say I was four years old and I remember going to my grandma's bedside table and I was, I don't know if I said anything, but I remember like going to see her. I remember that. Oh, that's dope, man. I had to bring you back there because that's something to think about. You know what I mean? Something yeah, I, that you go I, back I, in the mind and think about. Yeah, that's I've never I've never thought about that. I have to think more on that to figure out what what maybe sooner like later than that. I'm have to think on that one. That was like that was a good one. I didn't I never I, mean, I would hope that's I don't even know what else. Yeah, that's dope. What were your chores and how do you think it molded the person you are today? Oh my gosh, my mom was always really heavy on us of washing the dishes. Oh my gosh. I still hate it to this day. I hate washing dishes. I hate all chores. So I think the way <laughs> me is I need to make enough money to where I can pay someone else to do the things I don't want to do. I still to this day I feel like that's all it's more than me to do. I I will do it. I hate doing it though. Hate doing it. Honestly. I my goal is to make enough money to hire a chef, a maid that stays in house. Like there are certain things that I just do not want to do. And I do not, I never will want to do. So my mom was really heavy when I was cleaning the dishes specifically. It was like every single day. I have siblings, so we had to break it down between us or whatever. And it's just no matter what, we just don't want to do it. Like, I just hate washing dishes, hate putting clothes away. I'm not a chore person. I don't like doing it. Now I'm more disciplined. As like a, I'm more disciplined, so I do it. I still do it, but I don't like to. Like, I had to put my clothes away yesterday because on Sunday I do a majority of my chores just to get them out of the way on Sunday. I had to wash the clothes, put the clothes in the dryer, then you got to put the clothes up. And it's just like, I felt like I was there. It just feels so draining. So I hate them. What I've learned from that is that I have to make enough money to pay people to do the things that I just do not want. And I will never want to do. 
Right. No, that's pretty, that's, that's, that it molded you to think that way, which is not bad. Like, oh, chores and stuff isn't bad. You get it done. You still get it done, but it molded you to want to get somebody else to, you know what I mean? You got yeah. other things to think about. Like, like, yeah, exactly. Do. Once someone, someone had told me something one time and I don't know what it was. I was like, oh, I can do this myself. I was like, okay. I was going to, I was like, I could pay someone to do something. And I remember this conversation vividly. I was talking to one of my, um, one of my business partners and I was talking to him about, I was going to pay someone. I, I said, no, I was going to wash. I think I was going to wash my own car instead of paying someone to wash it. I thought I was going to wash my own car. It doesn't really matter. Da, da, da. He said, sure. You got to think like a, a wealthy person would or a rich person would. Yeah. You could wash your own car. But the time you're spending washing your car, you could spend doing something else to make more money. And you could pay someone else to wash your car and make the money. Like, you know, it's about using your time wisely. Yeah, you could wash your own car. And of course, I still clean my room. I, I don't, I'm a, the discipline, I still do the things I need to do. My room is very much put together, um, like before I go to sleep, just so I can wake up and have a clean room. It's like about my, I like, I take care of my environment and how I keep things. So I'm more organized, but... I was like, yeah, they, I could, I could do the dishes for the rest of my life. I could, I could cook for myself. I don't even like cooking, but I still meal prep every single Sunday, not because I like it, but because like the discipline of what it does for me throughout the week. But when I reach my goals and when I get to where I need to, like, you know, it would, it's, it's not, why would I spend four or five hours cooking for myself when I can pay someone to do it and go do something else in that four or five hours to make me more than I would, you know, to make me enough to pay him and then some. That's right. what I got. Yes. Hey, pay attention to the details, guys. She definitely said, you know what I mean, that uh, it, it, it makes more sense to pay somebody as opposed to just doing it. You know what I mean? And, you know, you still do it because it's like this is where we, you know, we, we started from where we started from. But it, it makes sense in the long run. Okay, um, to make sure in the time that someone's doing the task that you don't want to do, you have to be doing an income producing activity to make up because time is money. So don't just do nothing with the time. But if you're going to pay someone to cut your yard, I, might, I had this conversation with my, um, with someone else like last week, I think my dad, he was talking about how someone or one of our, like someone he knows like cuts his own yard to save money. And I'm like, I guess you saving money, but you're really not because you're spending a lot of time cutting your yard and doing all this. And meanwhile, if you would just pay someone else to do it and you knew you can make, you know, if I knew I could make $30 an hour, I would rather just make the money and give it to somebody than to go out there with myself and sweat in the hot sun and cut my yard personally. Right. It's like I got a, I got a cleaning company that I, that I, um, that I had got the LLC and everything for. And it's just like, you know, it's cool to go out and clean somebody else's houses, but if you could just pay somebody and get the residuals on the end, it mm -hmm. wouldn't. You know, it's not like it'll hurt you, you know what I mean? Because then you're not doing, like, yeah, you got to pay somebody else. But at the same time, it's like, bro, oh, I'd rather be doing something else than just cleaning somebody else's, you know, stuff. Like, but mm -hmm. um, I definitely yeah. did it, man. That's even, even don't, uh, some, I seen this at a seminar. I said, uh, don't be afraid to pay the people or to pay some, or to pay someone soon enough. Because it's like, it's like that whole time you'll be waiting for help or you're trying to hold off on your own, but it's like, it would have been better if you would have just paid for that help right away. You know what I mean? It would, it would have jump started things and moved things a lot faster. But, yes. um, I don't know it if it was ET that said that. Time. Sometimes you think, sometimes when you think you're saving time by doing something yourself or you're saving, or you sometimes people think they're saving money by doing something them, their selves instead of just paying someone else to do it. And it's not always true. Even down to getting your hair done. I don't really like doing my hair. I would rather go get it done by somebody else. And while she's doing it, you know, I trade. So I can be trading or I can be on the phone or I can be doing something else. But I don't like, there are certain things I don't like to do. I will never like doing them. And I want to pay, I would rather pay someone else to do it so I can do the things that actually pay me. It doesn't make sense for me to invest my time doing my own hair. That takes three hours. It could take her one hour, and in that one hour, I could do something else and make enough money to pay her. Yes, ma'am, I definitely agree. Did you like school growing up? Oh, you, you, um, just, you just actually said you did not like school, right? 
Right, I didn't stop liking school until junior year. I liked school all the way up until junior year. I always That's why it was always easy for me to do very well in it. My parents never had to stress over it. They never had to really check my grades or check my homework. They didn't have to tell me to do my homework. I would do it. Like, it wasn't over. I, I got moved up. They moved me to advanced classes. In sixth grade, they moved me to advanced classes, and then I started doing more homework and more work. But I also started making more, like, you know, just more intelligent friends, basically. People that I was, like, just were also, like, I'm just very, I'm very intelligent. It's not hard for me to learn things. But when it came to junior year specifically, junior year specifically is when I realized that not only do I not care about what they're teaching me, they're making it extremely hard for no reason. I took about six, There, you know, we have seven class periods. I didn't take a single period off ever. And I was always worried about my GPA. So I had six AP courses. I think. Get me. Go ahead, I'm listening. I got the window open and the flies trying to get me right now. Go ahead, though. You good? <laughs> <I, laughs> he trying to mess up I, the interview. Go ahead. And then I had one pre-AP course, which is basically pre-AP calculus. But they are all – I in junior year, I had all advanced classes, physics, English, reading, whatever. I don't even remember what other classes it was. But I know there were six classes, psychology, things like that. And it came down to an AP test. If you don't pass the AP test, you basically get no credit. I never, I've never, I've never in my life ended a class with a C up until that point. I don't know if senior, I don't even remember senior year. Senior year was a blur. But no matter what, um, I've never ended a class with a C. Really barely like a low B. Like I had, even in the classes I, like in the classes, the AP classes I had, I had 90s, 98s, 93s, 96s, 97s. Like I had high A's or like an 88, 87 or high B, whatever. But if it came down to the AP test, you don't pass the AP test, it really didn't matter. I hate testing. I hate standardized testing. I think it's extremely, extremely stupid to make people remember everything they learned for a year for one test. And if they don't remember everything from the beginning of the year to right now, it doesn't even matter. And it encourages people to memorize things instead of actually learning. So I didn't, I only passed like three AP tests that I've ever taken. I spent $300 on the test because you got to pay to take it. And after that, I was like, what was the point of all this? And I said, after junior year, I told myself I would never work that hard in school ever again. And then my senior year, I went from having all my life since sixth grade to junior year from when they put me in advanced classes to junior year, I had always had an all-advanced schedule. I had always had an all a like every advanced class that was available, I would always take it from when they put me in advanced classes in sixth grade to 11th grade. After 11th grade, I said, this isn't even worth it. I don't care about physics, point blank period. Why am I, I don't care about physics. I don't care about calculus. I didn't really, only clear I, class I liked was reading and English because I like to speak, talk. That's the only class I naturally excelled in. I didn't care about anything else. I'm like, why am I learning this? What This isn't, this isn't going to make any difference in who I'm going to be in the future. So I told myself after junior year that I would never work that hard in school ever again. So I went from having 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, for like the last, I don't know, like five to six years. For five to six years, I was doing all AP. My senior year, I had two AP classes. Nope, one. I had one AP class, which I was truant in. I stopped showing up. I stopped showing up to calculus. I had 15 <laughs> absolute calculus. Still ended with a 94. Still ended calculus with a 90. That's when I got confirmation that it never mattered. It, mm. I was it confirmed that it never mattered when I showed up. It never mattered why I turned in. I remember I turned the test in completely blank in calculus, AP calculus, front, back, blank with my name on it still into the class of the 94 and that's when I knew I really never had to do all that I like it was always extra it was always too all this extra stuff it never mattered I used to senior year I had the best year I started going to school later I was truant didn't matter still graduated top 10 percent I saw I would leave half the day didn't matter still still do what I need to do and I realized that that's why when it came to college I went from focusing on like, okay, my GPA, my GPA, my GPA, and to be this, 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 to like, I'm going to learn what I want to learn. And that's why I majored in communications. And as I was in college learning communications, I was like, why am I paying all this money to learn how to speak better when the best way to learn how to articulate yourself is to read, listen, write, and speak more. So I dropped out of college because it was way too expensive to be sitting up there for an education just so they could put me back in undergrad and say, you need math, science, reading again. I said, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it again. I already said I'm not going to be doing it. Like they, I'm, I, just, I, was done, I was done with it. So I did like school until I realized 
that everything I was learning was pointless and that even if I did the bare minimum, I would still end up with one of the best grades in the class because I, I, I started focusing on my network in senior year. The reason I ended with a 94 is because even though I wasn't there, when I'm there, the people around me, they like me. I'm cool. I can get the homework answers for them. I get the quiz answers from you and I'll turn the blank and still find a way to make it happen just because you can make more money with your connections than you can just sitting in a classroom. Yes, yes. Hey, man, that's well said right there. You know what I mean? Um, I, I believe, too, in school is like you should be working on your strengths as opposed to your weaknesses and then let yourself make the okay to work on your weaknesses because truthfully, it's like you're not going to you're not going to learn something that you don't want to learn. Like it's just not it's, it's, it's like a blockage there in the brain that's just like I'm, I don't want to learn it, so I'm not going to learn it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, especially if it's not going to help you in the future. You know, if it's not going to help you the way you're trying to go, it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think Einstein said if you judge a fish on his ability to climb a tree, he's always going to fail. Like I, don't, I didn't care about math. I really didn't. I didn't really care about science. I always knew I naturally excelled in reading and writing. I never had issues with it. Even when I did drop out of college, the first thing I did to make money before getting a job was I would have college students pay me to write essays for them because I can write an essay no matter what. I can always write an essay. And that's when I realized that being self-employed is just as bad as being employed. I said, being, trying to make my own money doing that, writing essays for people, I have to, if I'm not there writing the essay, I'm not making money, I'm spending hours on hours on hours, and that's when I realized that self-employment is just, it feels like I'm, I'm still exchanging my time for money. I feel like I've been in all four of the quadrants, and I know that exchanging your time for money is no way to live, and it, is, it just stressed me out like crazy. But I naturally started in write, write, writing, so I would write essays for college students have them pay me whatever I was. I was making good money, so I was making really, 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 really good money. Hustling, hustling. Yeah. With the time I was invested in, I would be at my computer for hours and hours writing essays, writing essays, writing essays, and I realized that this is not. I'm making money, but it still feels like I'm hustling backwards. What was your favorite teacher and why? Mr. Beal in statistics, AP statistics. That was, um, oh, actually, I, did have, I did have two AP classes senior year. AP statistics because he always, like, he clearly loved teaching. I love a teacher that loves to teach. He made it seem easy. He answered all the questions. He was younger than my other teachers. I enjoyed going to his class. Every time the weekend was over, he would ask us, before he even starts class, he like, what would y'all do this weekend? Somebody answer. We have good rapport. We talk. And so when he said it's time for class to start, Nobody's over talking him. No one's disrespecting him. Everybody's locked in. Everybody's answering questions. He made the classroom like a fun place to be. And he made it, I could tell that he liked what he did and he liked teaching. So it was easy for me. I had, an, I ended that class with like a 97. I ended that class with a high A, like mm. almost, like very close to 100, me and my friends. It was easy to pay attention in there and to understand because Mr. Beal clearly liked what he did, he clearly cared about us understanding, and he was always open to questions, always available for us. So he was really, hands down, one of my favorite teachers in my entire, yeah, out of, out of everything. Okay, yeah, Mr. Beal for sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> Now, nah, shout outs to him, man, real talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, what was your favorite school trip or outing? Mm. And why was it important to you? Mm. A school trip or outing? We honestly, whenever it got to, because all I really remember vividly is high school, of course, eighth grade, but all I remember vividly was really high school. And I, I mean, I had outings, but I guess the, the times I enjoyed most weren't really like school outings. It was like things I did with my friends. Like we would go like spring break, love spring break. Um, I met my best friend Lexi at the beach. We would go, I'm a very social person. So I'm extremely extroverted. I get a lot of energy. Uh, as an extrovert, I get a lot of energy from associating with other people. So um, spring break was super lit. I remember that being a very, 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 
I guess like I, like school outings, I really could care less about honestly, because I'm not gonna lie, we didn't do outings. You don't really go out and do things like field trips until you're like an upperclassman, which is junior and senior year. And junior year, I was way too focused on school to even think about wasting time to go through th do anything else. And um, senior year, I stopped caring about school, so I could care. I didn't really care what they did. I remember I went, even with prom, I didn't drop a thousand dollars on prom. I probably spent like two hundred dollars on my prom. I didn't wear any makeup. I, I I really didn't care. I slept in my graduation. I was already over it, so I really didn't. <laughs> yeah, I was already <laughs> over it. Yeah, I care about school outings. It didn't mean anything. I didn't take senior grad pictures. I didn't have a senior graduation party. I didn't care. Like, I really didn't. It was already too far gone. So school outings, eh. But with my friends, I we. I mean, of course, we've done we've done new, we've done crazy stuff. We went to Pride. I went to Pride. I love Pride. Being in that kind of energy of people that are just really accepting. Spring break, and I guess they were all really formative times because in junior year, I started to develop more confidence in myself because of the people, the girls, and the friends that I was surrounded with. So every time we would go out, that was kind of like just reinforcing, like just like the way we are with each other. The way they're they're very uplifting and motivating, things like that. So that. I didn't really care about school. Cannot emphasize that enough at that point. But <laughs> I really had a better time, like spending time with my friends and being around them because they they helped me grow and develop as a person in terms of my confidence. Like I'm a very confident person now, and that was a very formative year. My junior year specifically was very formative in terms of like me becoming more confident. No, that's dope. That's dope. Um, what books do you like? What kind of books do you like? Uh, personal development books. Uh, it's pretty much really all I read. It's pretty much all I read right now. I'm trying, I'm, I'm working on telling myself to read like a nonfiction. I still for fun, but I really don't. Um, like thinking, girl, read a lot of Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill is probably one of my favorite authors right now. Um, and maybe till the end of time. When he, I read Outweighing the Devil. I think Outweighing the Devil really changed my life. And like, mm -hmm. I've read it three times. And because, you know, repetition is the mother of all learning. I wouldn't have ever changed my life because just like ex just basically just explaining to you how easily your life can get off track by doing little things on a daily basis that don't align with your goals and also making sure people understand that the devil is not some big creature under your bed waiting to grab your legs and drag you down to hell. The devil is, you know, little habits that you're doing that are slowly derailing you and are going to ruin your life over time, even if they don't ruin your life right now. Like watching too much TV, overindulgence in any bad habit. So overindulgence in food, overindulgence in sex, overindulgence in sleep, just overindulgence in little habits and how they can really take you from where you are looking to go to somewhere you don't even realize, you know, where you feel stuck, where you feel stuck. He calls it drifting. So yeah. Outwin is probably one of my favorite books. And it changed my life because after I, after I read it, that's when I started to really develop discipline. And I was really focused on all the little things I was doing. That's where the meal prepping came. That's where the working out came. That's where the daily journaling and all the meditation and really focusing on the little habits because I realized that not doing them Maybe it won't ruin my life right now, but I have goals for myself. And by not doing the things that I do right now, I'll one day find myself five years later all the way over here when I could have been right where I wanted to be. That's really so important, man, because time goes by so fast. Like, it really does. And it's like, especially when you're doing nothing. You know what I mean? Like, you could be doing nothing, and it's like, oh, well, an hour just passed. Oh, well, that's why, that's why I try to tell myself. I'd be like, yo, you can just go to the gym. And then, you know what I mean? Like, like, like from there, you can figure it out. But just make sure you do that. Because at the end of the day, it's like, how can you have body goals or, you know, goals to be a certain, to have a certain look? And it's like you, you, you would drift off into wanting to do something else. You know what I mean? And yeah. I heard the audio to the Out Out of the Devil. That's that was the first time I got introduced to it was the audio. And the audio was hard. I love the audio of it because the way the, he makes the devil sound and how it has a different tone of voice. And yeah. it really like if anyone that should re, like you can I feel like when I Beyond Scared Straight, reading Outwitting the Devil like scared me. Like I was like, yo, 
he's I can't, I literally put the book down and I was like he's trying to ruin my life. He's trying to ruin my life. Not right. like he's but it's the it's like he one thing he said a quote he said that sticks with me to this day is habits like you know habits comes in two habits come in twos threes and fours like habits comes in do like doubles triplets and quadruplets that's what he said habits come in doubles triplets and quadruplets so that one little habit of watching too much tv it really isn't just watching too much tv as you start to watch too much tv then you start to eat a little bit too much while you're watching tv and then you're so tired because you're watching tv so you're gonna sleep for 10 hours out of the day and you can right. sleep your life away you can sleep your life away i get six hours i'm very very diligent with like i know that i can run effectively on six hours of sleep i don't need eight i don't need ten i'm young right now so i can do what i need to do but outweighing the devil was like a book that after I read it, I literally made instant changes. Like I read Outweighing the Devil, I understood what he was saying, and I determined, I said, I'm not going to drift through life and let something else make decisions for me. I'm going to make a decision of what I want my life to look like. And it happens every single day with the little things. And that's why I tell people like habits are so important. It's not that your life is going to, you're going to bite into a Big Mac one day, you're going to have a heart attack and die. That's not how it happens. You're going to eat a Big Mac once a week, gain a couple extra pounds. Yeah. yeah. And next thing you, know, mm -hmm. you never, you don't even realize where you're going to end up. But if I know that the habits, I'm, right now, of course, I'm working out every day. No one will, of course, everybody that watches me now understands that I'm going to have the body of my dreams very, very soon. And I'm going to be in shape for the rest of my life because now it's a habit. It's a lifestyle. It's not really a surprise. So I'm not going to be surprised. When I pop out and I'm like, oh my God, this is the body I've always wanted because I'm literally working for it on a daily basis down yep. to the eating habits, the, the stretching and everything. But yep. then that's just, I don't know, it's just outweighing the devil, hands down, top two, not two. It's like Napoleon Hill, when he made that book, that's when I was like, this man, like he's really just so before his time. It's just crazy how he could even have these concepts and I love that book because it changed my life. It, like, scared me. Like, it, I was genuinely, like, okay, he's trying to ruin my life. You know what I think it is, too? It's, like, you really have to study the mind. Like, like when it comes down to Bob Proctor, like, it's really everything that, everything. Like, right now, this is something that's going, like, I don't want to get too off track, but this is, like, the, the mind did this. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> you're awake. The mind is awake. You know what I mean? Um. It's consciousness. So everything is actually consciousness. And the fact that, you know, if you give power to fear, you know, that's still a mind thing. You know what I mean? Because somebody else may not be scared of that one thing that you fear. You know what I mean? So it's just a mind thing. So when it when it really comes down to studying the mind, I think it's only one, like not one way, there's billions of ways, but it's really like just the mind. That's it. It's, it's just that. And, and Napoleon Hill, like, he just spoke on that. You know what I mean? He has one of those. You have one of those. I have one of those. And he just spoke on the mind. And I think that, you know, Outwitting the Devil was one of the books that actually was like, wow, like, like the devil's not just some, you know, what people make it seem pitchfork with the eye. Uh, uh, that's fear. If you want to look at it like that, then that is a, a symptom of the devil. But that's things that, we've been dealing with all our life and um it's it's really just comes down to the mind you know what i mean like 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 you have to think positively in certain situations you have to think on the things that you want as opposed to thinking of the things that you don't want you know what yeah. i mean yeah even so. in Think Grow Rich which I'm listening I'm listening to Think and Grow Rich right now and they talk he talks about how you know a positive mental attitude a positive mental attitude you not knowing. I mean, that's really what help, helps most people get wealthy. Like a positive mental attitude. I don't expect bad luck. Like there are certain things that I just don't really think about. I don't worry about. And I expect. I like. I mean, I'm never really like crazy surprised when th good things happen to me because I have a positive mental attitude. So I feel like I expect good things to happen to me, and when they do happen, I'm like, oh my god, like I'm happy it happened. I'm grateful for it, and I want more things like this. You know. So it's like. I don't like negative people, like people that assume they have bad luck or they're just very low vibrational. So I just try to keep myself away from them or just not engage in conversation 
because I understand how important it is. I have a very positive um, mindset. I don't watch the news. I don't look right. for news. I don't look to be upset. I'm not searching for things to make me sad. I'm only follow. That's why I follow people that motivate me. I follow people that work out. I follow people that read. I follow people that are entrepreneurs. I follow people that are in alignment with the person that I want to be. So I don't follow superstars. I don't follow Kim Kardashian. I don't follow Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> I don't follow whose lifestyle I do not want to directly imitate. Who do I not? I like if I don't believe that I can do what you're doing and get the results that you're getting, then I'm not going to do it. I'm not looking to be the next female rapper that came up and did something crazy. So I don't follow celebrities. I mainly follow people that I believe I'm in alignment with what you're doing. Um, Daniel G, Grant Cardone, Stormy Wellington, Jesse Lee, people that genuinely inspire me. And I can look at their page and be like, if I follow you and listen to you, I can get close to if I can get half the success that you have, then I'll be I'll be pleased. I'll be pleased. I get, I, I can see you killing it like Jesse Lee. I can see that. Oh, yeah. oh, I can sure. definitely see that. You know, and but in your way, like because that's that's really what it is. It's like I see you being you, but I'm saying like I like like her success is bold. You know what I mean? For sure, I I agree 100, percent and that's the goal overall. Yes, yes. Um, what are you currently reading? I know you said nice girls don't get the corner office at your mom. Oh yeah, that was a long time ago. I read that a long time ago. It's just that one then that part of the book really, really stuck with me. And other things like don't play with your hair at a meeting and don't like go to the bathroom. Little things like that. But what I'm reading right now and I've been reading it for like the last two weeks is Think and Grow Rich, a black choice. It's the black version <sighs> of Think and Grow Rich and it is literally if, if honestly, if Outwitting the Devil wasn't my favorite book, this would be my favorite. But I still love Outwitting the Devil. But this book right here, I listen to it in the gym. I listen to it while I sleep. I listen to it in the car. I listen to it on a road trip. I it's like repetition is mother mother of all learning. So this is a book I'm gonna be listening to for a while. I think I'm gonna give it like three months of just straight listening to it over and over and over and over and over again. Um, what I'm reading. So I'm listening. Well, I don't consider what I'm reading. I don't consider like to have read it. I listen to it. What I'm reading is um, "Awaken the Giant Within" by Tony Robbins. So mm. I had a friend that had the book and wasn't really reading it, and she said I could borrow it. So I've been reading that because I heard a lot about Tony Robbins. I know he's amazing, and I know he's been able to help people change their lives. So I wanted to see what he had in terms of physical book form. So that's what I'm actually reading. Yeah, Tony Robbins is dope, man. It's definitely dope. I, I I I wouldn't say I lost it, but I misplaced the Thinking Girl Rich Black Choice when I was in Florida. Mm. So I called the Airbnb people and just was like, give it to somebody else. Like just somebody else would need it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, like they'll love it if they really tap into it. But I had my mom tap into it. I had my lady. The people tap into it. Just I don't know. I think it was just the even the title, you know what I mean? Because we come, we're black, we, we come from, you know, African American descent, de descendants. And it's like, I guess the title itself is different from just the regular thinking, grow rich Napoleon Hill, you know what I mean? And um, me, I'm, I don't see color, um, but um, I get it. And I, and I, and I love the fact that everybody was like, oh, thinking grow rich a black's choice. Like it just, it just brought that out. It, it was bold to everybody. Um, that's dope, though. Would you prefer audio or read it? Oh, I mean, I want to definitely read it, but audio for sure. Because that's why, because I'm able to consume the information all day. That's why the audio is so important. I listen to it. Like, after I get off this phone, after I get this, it's going to already be playing. I'm playing in the car. Like, it's the audio version of it is what allows it to sink into my subconscious. So the reason I like audiobooks is because I'm able to listen to them all day and repetition is the mother of all learning. So I know that even even as I'm listening to it and I've already heard it, I still catch different things at different times that I'm like, dang, I didn't catch that the first time I listened to it. And I've been listening to it now for almost a week and a half. And still yesterday I caught a quote when I was like, dang, that was good. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And it's just like, some people read a book one time that, and they never read it again. And you can't read it once and really get it. You can't read it once and really get it. They, I mean, even Outweighing the Devil didn't change my life until the second time I read it. So you can't read something once and get it. The audio was powerful because I'm listening to it. And like, especially in the car, that's like drive-by development. 
you have to, I feel like it's important to do things that the average person wouldn't do so that you can put yourself in a position to potentially get better results in the long run. And that's how I maintain a positive mental attitude. That's how I maintain my, my, my overall optimism about the lifestyle I can create in my future because I'm constantly listening to stories of successful individuals who are black men and women who are able to believe in themselves and change their lives and come up, be successful, be millionaires. And these are people that were dealing with real life racism, real life in your face racism, when that segregation was a thing, when there's the there's all the first. What I love about the book is like the first. They're talking about Oprah Winfrey and the first person who was a marketing director of Xerox, who I've never heard of. The first Miss America that was black. The first, the first, the first. And these are people that were dealing with real life discrimination. So I love the book because these are stories that I have not heard before. And it shows me, and I'm not even dealing. We're like, I mean, of course, there's still problems in America with like, you know, racism and things like that, but it's not nearly what they were dealing with whenever people were still looking at you as less than, and they were not even being able, like you could do it openly and no one even cares because they're still like, you know, the first little black girl to go to school. So it's like the times were different and I respect the stories much more because they still excelled. They still got up and did what they needed to do. So the way I'm able to maintain the attitude that I have about life and the outlook I have on my own personal future is because when people, when I'm in the gym and people think I'm blaring, you know, rap music, I'm listening to personal development. When I'm in the car and it looks like I'm just super focused, I'm listening to personal development and I'm just thinking. When I'm going to sleep, I'm listening to personal development. I'm in the shower. It's like a 24 hour thing. So that's why I encourage people to get the audio version so that you don't just read it one time and then cause I have Think and Grow Rich, the physical book. I still yeah. haven't finished. I don't know why. I still haven't finished a book, book, book. I yeah. like the I have the audio, but I don't know what it was. A book I just didn't grab me like that. The audio I can listen to over and over and over and over and over again, and I'm catching something different every single time. And repetition is so important. I think I've listened to the book four times this week already. It's just okay. it's twelve hours long. And I'm just continue playing, continue playing. It doesn't matter what chapter I'm on. I'm gonna click it, click, keep it playing, keep it going, keep it Let going, keep it playing. Yeah. I start to notice when I start to listen to when I listen to it more and more. I start to notice that people, opportunities, and conversations start to align with the goals that I have, and nothing is a coincidence anymore. I'm listening to the book. Nothing is a coincidence. So I, every time I have an idea of something I should do, I do it immediately. If I'm at the gas station, I'm pumping my gas, and I think, huh, I should probably get a lottery ticket. I'm just going to buy one. Just cause I'm, I, Nothing is a coincidence. I'm expecting good things to happen because I have a positive mental attitude because I'm listening to this book every single day every hour of the day yeah it's like it's like how can you think negative when you're listening to something that's so like intriguing and it makes you think you know what i mean like um i, I love listening to millionaires secrets of the millionaire mind mm, that sounds good and it's like that one right there is like my god like it's like it said we all have the same 24 hours we're all human why are some rich and some aren't it's just something in the way we think and things that we may not know. So it's like, that just makes sense to me. It's like, how can, you know, somebody be in that type of position? It's like, you have to know something that somebody else just doesn't know. Like, it's, you know, we're all human. You feel me? Yeah, facts. We're all, yeah, that's true. They talk about that a lot and think we're rich, like, Poverty is, a, if you, he said, if you are experiencing overwhelming, overwhelming poverty, it's more than likely because you don't realize the power of your mind that you can have a life that you want. He said, that's really it. He said, if you're experiencing poverty, that's a you then because you're not realizing the power of your mind. So every time he says, I'm like, dang, he's right. He said, anyone that's wealthy will, people that, are, people that don't have a lot of money or people that have a poverty, people that have a poverty mindset will shrink their goals to match the income that they're making. Like, okay, I really want this car, but I don't make enough to get that car, so I'm going to settle for this instead. People that are wealthy in the mind will increase their income to match their goals. I want this apartment. I want to live in this household. I don't make enough right now, so I'm going to make this change. I'm going to make some move on my end, but I'm not going to change my goals. I'm not going to settle for less because I feel like, one thing they even talk about in Outwitting the Devil is even settling for less is a habit. You get a, if you, you can get in the habit of stopping yourself 
achieving your goals, you can get in the habit of, oh, I'm fine with this. I really wanted this, but it's all good if I take this. I wanted that car, but this is cool too. I wanted this kind of relationship, but I'll take this. If this is what I'm getting, and you can get in the habit of accepting anything that life gives you, and if you continue to accept, you are no longer going to be in the position to even request or not even request, demand to the point where it's like, I want this apartment. I'm not accepting anything other than this. So if, you, if I, I'm, I don't want this, I, want, I don't want one bedroom. I want a two bedroom. I want a balcony. If I don't have a balcony, I'm not taking it. I'm not accepting it. Right. Too many people have a habit of accepting less than what they want. And next thing you know, that's how you end up 50 years old. You look up one day and now you're like, this isn't where I thought I was going to be. This isn't what I thought I was going to do. This isn't the family I thought I was going to have. But I kept accepting what life gives me. And you're just never too old. You're never too old to change your life, but you better you might as well do it while you're young. That's why I'm glad I'm doing. I listen to all the things I'm doing. I do while I'm 21, because there's no way. Like right now, that I really don't see any way that I don't get what I want. I don't. See, I don't really see it going any other way, because of the things that I'm doing behind closed doors to make sure that I live the life that I really want to live. Let's go. Powerful. Powerful. Yes. Um, what do you regret? I regret trying to go so hard in high school. My, my, my only real regret is not having fun in school and focusing so much on my GPA. I could have done eight if it wouldn't have taken so much time away from me doing my homework. I would have done AV tech and been on Euler Vision, which is a, a, like a little, every Friday we have a video drop called Euler Vision and all the seniors come together and they make a video. It's super cool to go around interviewing people in the school. And I was like, dang, I really want to be on Euler Vision, but you have to be an AV tech to do that. And I, it wasn't giving me enough GPA points, so I couldn't do it. I only regret taking school so seriously to the point where it was no longer enjoyable. I stressed myself out. I had to take a melatonin to go to sleep. I'm taking caffeine to stay up. Almost stressing to the point I'm almost in tears over some of these classes, and it didn't even matter. I had to learn that if it's not going to matter in five years, don't let it stress you for five minutes. And that philosophy helped me through my senior year. But I really wish from freshman year, when I got injured, I'm, I'm okay. Focusing on academics was one thing, but I wish I would have figured out what do I like to do and what do I do best and what brings me the most joy, and I'm going to do that. Regardless of what my grades are, I was so focused on the GPA that nothing else really mattered. So I didn't do the things that I thought I would have enjoyed because it wasn't going to go benefit my GPA. I was like, you know, so I only regret taking school so seriously when I had the chance to really just enjoy myself as a teenager um, because it's just, I ended up not, I'm not even in school. Like, I'm like, you know, I mean, of course, everything happens for a reason, but I know that it was pointless. Like the GPA, it doesn't really matter what your GPA was in high school. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> I'd be trying to tell people that are in school right now. I'm like, I'm not going to lie. It's not going to matter in five years. It really isn't. That's not going to make you a millionaire. It didn't make, it really didn't make a difference. So I only, reg I literally only regret going so hard in high school for the first three years and taking so long to realize that it does, I don't even care about what I'm learning. It doesn't matter to me. And I'm only worried about this GPA so I can look good to the other people around me because everybody else has a four point da da da, da and I want to be in the top 100 and I want to do da da da. And I achieved those things. And when I walked across that stage, it did, I still didn't care. I got my. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could tell by the way you said I didn't care. You said that a, a few times about that about uh, I, senior year and everything. I I when I thought I don't know what I thought. I thought graduation was gonna feel so, <sighs> and I was all I already got that <sighs> when I decided junior year that I was never gonna stress like that again. So I I said I graduated junior year. I said, well, that's I'm like, I will never have a course load like this again. Boom. And that's when I started having fun. So I really could care less about walking across the stage. I didn't care about the cap. I got the cap and gown late. I didn't even buy the cap and gown. I had to buy it, borrow it from somebody else. No, like there's no, no letterman, no senior ring, class ring, no yearbook. 
I didn't need, I know I didn't even, I didn't really care. By that time, senior year, I did not care. I didn't drop $1,000, $10,000 on prom. I didn't wait to get pictures. I did not care. It didn't mean enough to me. It was not an accomplishment that felt like I really did this because I BS the whole last year and I still did. I, I'm like, bro, I could have BS these whole four years. I, I was tripping. I could have done this all four years, focus on meeting <laughs> focus on my network and I could have got probably the same grade in those same four years instead of standing up all night worrying about these classes it didn't even matter it really didn't hey I think what it did now is just showed you more so you know it gave you some type of resilience you know what I mean it gave yeah, it you me that I one thing I realized in that time is that I love to learn. I learn easily. I love education, but I have to care about what I'm learning about. So it showed me the importance of education. It's I know that I'm capable of learning, but it also made me realize that if I'm not learning what I want to learn, it's all 100% pointless. So I mean, pros and cons, but I know that education you can learn from. I learn a lot from reading. The things that I learned on personal development and being the kind of person I am right now, no one would have taught me that in school. They didn't teach me about credit. They didn't teach me about taxes. They didn't teach me how to take out a car loan. They didn't teach me how to do really anything that would help me be a functioning adult. But they taught me how to, you know, I was learning about rotation. They taught me. They taught me. I'm in physics. Rotation <laughs> of a time. I could care less. So, yes, I mean, I learned the importance that. I know education, You know, your education never stops and you never get to a point where, oh, I'm done learning right now. And I know that. I know that. But me learning math, science, and reading right now would be literally pointless. I'm so glad I'm not in college. I'll be here trying to get a degree that I don't care about. Just other people that have a degree. Yeah, they're teaching you things to make you work for them. So it's like, mm -hmm. what, are you, what are you addicted to? The pain, the suffering, or the freedom? They don't teach you to be a free human being or to have the freedom and to succeed the way you want to succeed. They teach you based, based upon what they want you to do at the end of, you know what I mean? Which is make more money for them. But yeah. it's weird. It's crazy. It's a, it's, that's a whole nother topic, subject, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, if you could share with your family your most important values, what would you say? Mm, integrity discipline, honesty, and I don't know how to put this into words, but like treating other people how you want to be treated. I guess I'm really, I'm really big on just how I treat people. Like, you know, I'm like a pretty chill person. Like, I don't really, not many people will meet me and be like, oh, I don't like her. Like, I don't, I really, I really be, I'm really like a very nice person. Um, integrity is important because it's about what you do behind closed doors when no one's watching. So, even down to listening to books, like, no one, I don't, like, it doesn't really matter to anyone else. But what I do behind closed doors is important to me. You feel me? So I don't have to really post that I'm going to the gym. I really don't. I do it because I love to make content. I love making content. But in my in the integrity, I'm going to do it anyways. I don't have to always eat well, but I'm going to do it anyways. I have integrity. Um, honesty, because I, I, I really don't see a point in lying about anything. I feel like I'm a very truthful. I'm a very open and honest person, honestly, when it comes down to it. So, yes, that's and, that's, and then even treating people how you want to be treated is a virtue, and I feel like if you treat people terribly, you deserve to be treated terribly, too. Like, you get what you give, so I treat people well, and people treat me well. Like, people do treat me well. I have numerous times where just things, things just happen for me, like, just because of talking to the person, like, down to, like, the busboy at a restaurant, like, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to talk to everybody. I'm going to try to do my best and make sure I respect everybody and just be kind to people. Having a pleasing personality is um, just so important. Having a pleasing personality is so important. So I treat people how they want to be treated. Um, I think integrity. And then discipline, because without discipline, you can't do anything. I really think that. If you, if you can't, if you're not disciplined, um, if you are not disciplined, you just, I don't know, I feel like you just don't keep your word. I feel like you're not someone that does what they say they're going to do because when you don't want to do it, then you're not going to do it. So discipline is probably number one because it's just, it's like a, if you if you don't have it, you're going to suffer, period. Mm. That's what I believe. Yes, yes, yes. What do you value most and why? In terms of like um, character traits, qualities, or just like it could be anything. 
city, anything? Uh, of course, outside of my immediate family, of everybody, they know I all love them. Um, I would have to say my son, my dog, and I know it sounds <laughs> like dog, it would be crazy. Of course, my family, yes, my family, but outside of them, um, Coda Jackson, Coda Jackson. That is literally my heart outside of my body. I literally love him. I, I mean, that's that's all. I literally love him so much. I'm working with him now to make him. As I became more disciplined, I realized the only reason I ever thought he was a bad dog or he didn't listen is that I never took the time to teach him what he needs to know. And if I wasn't disciplined, he wasn't going to be either. If I wasn't consistent, he wasn't going to be either. So, um, and he's mine. That's why I feel like. That I, I, I hold him at such a high standard because this is not anyone else's dog. They're, he's no one else's responsibility. How he acts, how he looks, how he is, how healthy he is, is dependent on me. And I don't have a physical child right now, but it def, I definitely will have numerous children in the future. But for Coda right now, like, he is my my, my pride and joy. I, I focus on him. I like to spend, I love spending time with him. He's probably one of the people that I can just hang out with. Not people, but like, you know, whatever. I, if I, like, <laughs> like, whenever I'm in a bad, like, if I'm stressed, like, I'm do. I feel like I'm, I've been working a lot or I've been doing a lot. I'm just frustrated. You know what I mean? I just go, I really just want to be around him. If I need to go on a 15 hour road trip, I would go on a road trip with just him. He doesn't need to say, I know he doesn't talk, he whatever, whatever. <laughs> it's just that something about like raising him, something about raising him. I'm really big on responsibility. I think I enjoy having responsibility. I like responsibility. That's why I like to lead. I'm a natural born leader. I want people to be like, if this does not go right, it's because it's I, I'll take responsibility. I want to take responsibility for it just because it's it's just it is someone has to and i feel like it's i i mean i don't want to pass it off oh it's your fault it's your fault it's your fault after i learned that after i started taking responsibility for everything that's when i was able to change coda's life so i value him so much because he's mine i got him when i was 19 and i was undisciplined and i didn't really know what to do and i wasn't really focused and i can see how i've changed he's changed too so as i'm growing he's growing too so he's mine like you know i feel like i take that's just my that's my baby so when it comes to coda i don't play about him i take responsibility for him and that's probably one of my my top like my prized possessions if i had to say like that like fire house on fire coda jackson and i'm good and i'm, I'm, I'm dipping everything else I'm, i'll replace it coda jackson i'm dipping take take the photo albums everything coda if i got coda i'm, I'm out literally let's go shout out shout out to your son you know what yeah. I mean? That's, that's, your, that's your kid right there. You know what I mean? And I get it, though, because my, my lady, her family, like, that was my first time really, like, being introduced to dogs being in the house. Like, I used to think, like, dogs belong outside. Like, it was just like... Oh, nah. but, but But I guess you probably got a small dog, right? Oh, no. Nah. He's a husky. He's okay, a big... so, yeah, I, yeah, I would have thought he belonged outside. I would have been like, man, what is this dog doing in the house? But I, I, I got introduced. So I was like 18, 19, because I've yeah. known my lady for a while. But it's just the fact that, you know, I'm from the Bronx. You know, Dude. we kind of just like, they use dogs for all types of shit, dog fights, all types of shit. So I just never had the awareness that dogs were able to function in a household well that was only something that i seen in like movies or something you know what i mean you watch home alone or something like that you know what i mean something like that i don't even know if it was a dog in home alone but you watch one of those bright movies they got yeah. lasso running around somewhere you know what i mean but um that's dope man that, you know what i mean that's yes. crazy but he's not an outside dog he is not an outside dog he's a wherever he wants to be dog he's a Anywhere, I, like, I, there was a long time when he was a puppy. If I could, if he couldn't go, I wasn't going. Dead. I would brought, I brought him to Walmart. I brought him to, I, because I, there was a little period of time where I went to like a community college when my mom wanted me to go. Um, I brought him to school one time. I said, if Coda can't go, I'm not going. Point blank, period. Um, people asked me to come over to their crib. I said, I'll buy Coda can't come. I'm not coming. I didn't yo, really care. About yo, that's yeah, that's so bold. So I seen people, um, actually have their dog on the train, like, like, like they'll get on the train and the dog is on the train too, like on the bus yeah. and all that. I'm like, yo, this is on the airplane. I'm working on figuring out, like, after I get him to be able to 
I would never put him under a plane because I'm not going to put him under a plane. That's point point period. So um, I have to I, right now we're working on our ability to walk around people. But once he can walk calmly in the airport, I'm just going to have I would I will literally be taking flights with him and he'll sit next to me. I would never put him under a plane because oh, that's my man. son. So I don't know. I I'm, I don't like to put him in a kennel. I barely like to take him to the groomer because I don't want anyone else to do anything to him and me not know it. It's just not an option because he can't tell me. So if he can't say anything, it's like I'm not about to put you. I don't even know these people. Who are these people? I'll leave you with them so they can hit you? No, I'm not doing that. Not no, doing that. You sound like a, a protective mom. Indeed, um, that's literally if, what it if is. You, if you if you if you met a genie and were granted three wishes, what would they be? Mm -hmm. I would wish let's see I would probably well one I would wish for like a a million dollar fitness corporation I want to be able, I want to be like Jim Shark so I'm close like Jim Shark I want a million dollar fitness multi million dollar corporation like not like a, oh, I want a million dollars right now. Like, I want the company. I want the company of it to make sure I can make money off that forever. Pass that down to my children. That's one thing. I would want something for the world. Like, something that could benefit all people. Mm. Mm. That's a good question. Three wishes. <sighs> Most people get here and they go crazy. I'm not gonna lie to you, they be going I'm, crazy. Like I'm trying, I'm trying to think. I want to. I'm, I'm thinking. I think it's like the money aspect in terms of like the. If I can make a company that's like cool that does that, like I would. The money would forever handle itself, and I know it's something I'm passionate about, and I would love that. Um, but I know that if I had a if I had a wish I could make that could help everybody, that would be. Uh, Let's see. Mm. I don't know. Let's, <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. okay, I have all the money is done. Now everything else is going to be cool because of who I am. You know, I can do with the money, of course. So I would, yeah, and I can do, I think like that, I can do that with that. So I feel like if I had that one wish, the first wish would be for me, and now so I can make the money I want to retire my parents, retire my family, do everything I need to do, and give back to the community in the way I want to. So, two other wishes. I would wish. <laughs> yeah, this one got you stuck real quick. It's like, bottle. Because uh, I'm trying, I don't, I feel like, I don't know, there's a. I want, I would wish for a, I guess maybe like a best selling book. I would probably want, I would want a number one bestseller book that the whole world would read for like the end of time. Like a leg, that would probably go towards my legacy. So the, that would like be- Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. Like I want to be like the same way Napoleon Hill has and stuff. I want every, I want, I really want to write a book to where um, people are reading it like years after I'm gone. That's for one. And what can benefit the world? What can benefit the world? I would probably say I would wish for a reverse global warming, like ugh, less plastic uh, to pick up all the litter or to instill in people the idea that littering is wrong. I would probably do that, like a mindset shift of the whole collective to understand that global warming is a thing and that if we don't do something about it, our world is going to go to hell. So I would say that would be like my last thing, just so we can save the earth somehow. Nah, that's dope. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool, man. That's three for us. Uh, those are those are those are your genie wishes, and um, this is this is the part of the show that we do five for five, right? So I'm gonna give you five. You it's five answers to five questions. You know what I mean? So they okay. could be quick. You could you know what I mean? Either way. Just um top five places to visit. Okay. Bali, Dubai, uh Tan Tanzania, Egypt, Ghana. Nice, nice. Nice. That's really nice. Um top five hobbies. 
yoga, journaling, reading, spending time with Coda, working out, really. Top five foods. To, I mean, I'm vegan now, so I'm still learning a lot of food. Okay, pesto pasta, pesto pizza, and tacos, veggie burger, or Beyond Burger, and uh, tomato basil soup. Let's go. Shout out to the vegan eaters. Top five shows. They could be... Somebody put audios in there. Somebody put audios when they was here. Somebody also was like, earn your leisure, things like okay. that. Like, I never, I've never heard nobody say that. Usually people would just go straight to the shows. But I'm just letting you know, top five, you can go in. Yeah, I actually, I actually don't watch TV. So I don't have a top. I haven't watched TV in like two years. Like, so I really, I would say for audios, Thinking Girl Richard Black Choice, um, Jesse Lee's The People's, Men the People's Mentor. Um, mm, Gary V audio experience. Mm, Social proof podcast. And do I have a show? Do I have a show? I really don't have a show. I would say the last one would be I would the devil. Honestly, that's another audio I like, but that how that would be it, yeah. Okay, okay. Top five movies. It could be of all time. They could be top five movies. Ready Player One, The Lion King, Brother Bear, uh, The Great Gatsby, and White House Down. That's me. That's me. Trini, last okay. question. Will you come back to the show for another interview? Of course. Of course. Of course. Let's whenever, whenever I'm ready, whenever you're ready, just let me know. Let's go, let's go. Everybody that came up here, most people, you know, they, they it's, it's all smiles. So, you know, I asked them all that question, you know, or, or let them know, like, yo, man, we coming back for another one, you know what I mean? Like, for sure, for sure, you know what I mean? But I know you're busy, I know you're doing your thing, but I'm here, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, man, this, 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 this interview was amazing. I hope everybody that tapped in got some knowledge. I'm walking away better from this. Um, I don't know if I made you think enough to make you walk away better from this. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. I definitely like the questions you asked, especially like the one about my earliest memory. I'm still thinking about that one. Let's go. Let's go. So you already know, read, remember, repeat. Enjoy the rest of your day. I hope it's productive. I know you You are super disciplined. And everybody follow Trini. Trinity is, is T-R-I-N, Illionaire. Mm-hmm. Well, you should be able to click the drop down the top. You should be able to click the drop down the top and let y'all follow, follow me if you want to. You know how I go. You know how I go. So you already know, family. Enjoy the rest of the day. And I will see you again on this platform. Yes. Thank you for having me. Bye. 100, Trin. Dope interview, family. Dope interview, as always.